Sometimes gamers take on tasks that are insane. Things that you would never expect people to even think of doing, let alone accomplish. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 monumental tasks players did in video games. Starting off with number 10, fans translated every single Native American line of dialogue in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, these were fans that worked with experts in the dialogue used in the Vinland part of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. At one point in the game, Evier goes to Vinland, which is coastal North America, an area that's being obviously colonized. And rather than translate the language that these characters use, they allow you to be completely in the dark as to what they're saying, which is exactly what would happen if you were somebody who went into a new country and couldn't understand anybody. You don't get like a translation underneath them so you understand what's going on. And for that reason, it's actually a very authentic feeling interaction. The group that translated this is called Access the Animus. And considering that the language used in these sections is actually a real language, this might actually be a little less impressive than when they managed to crack the code with Isu, the made up language that we see in the series elsewhere. I mean, that's some pretty serious dedication in all honesty. At number nine, a StarCraft player by the name of Cyril made StarCraft history after not only being the very first non-Korean StarCraft finalist, but also the first non-Korean to win it. Now, this isn't to say something like Koreans are just automatically better at this game. It's that the league has been primarily dominated by that country, uh, literally for 20 years. The country takes the game very seriously. There is a cottage industry around StarCraft in Korea, and there's a lot of reasons why that country has dominated it for so long. To not only become a finalist, but win it, the grand final of StarCraft, you really have to dedicate a massive amount of time. And I think that he needs to be lauded for the amount of dedication that this would take. Good for you, man. Nothing against Korea or Koreans. Obviously, their skill level is incredibly high, but sometimes it's nice to see somebody else get a shot at something, you know? At number eight, a player by the name of Jay in Skyrim decided that they wanted to kill absolutely everything in Skyrim. Now, keeping in mind that the game itself is now about 10 years old, a fresh challenge is interesting. Now, keeping in mind in Skyrim that a lot of things respawn, like for instance, various NPCs take a couple of days and then they respawn when you re-enter an area, which to be frank, is actually the exploit that was used here. Jay and Skyrim actually planned a route along the map, which did not repeat visits to any certain area so that nobody would ever respawn and racked up a kill tally of over 2,200 people and over 2,400 animals, creatures, and other non-human beings. This is, if not every single thing in the game killed, probably pretty close. That is a huge kill count in Skyrim. For how action-oriented the game can actually be, you don't kill thousands of things in that game. A lot of it is spent exploring and tracking stuff down, meeting with people, etc. And a lot of the killing is done in fairly confined situations. So I don't know if I would say good on you, Jay and Skyrim. It's kind of evil to kill everything, but impressive. At number seven, a couple of guys did some pretty insane stuff in Grand Theft Auto. The first guy I want to mention is a player by the name of Unnamed, very clever, sir, who finished the entire single player storyline in nine hours and did not take a single hit. Now, in order to ensure that he never took even a single hit, he installed a mod that would kill him instantaneously if he took any damage whatsoever. Now, the most interesting part about this is it actually took him 48 attempts, just absolute dedication and a hell of an accomplishment. Another Twitch streamer by the name of Dark Viper AU spent around 33 hours beating a single mission without killing anyone in Grand Theft Auto V. And he didn't just do like a little one. He picked one of the very large heists where it's so easy to rack up a huge kill count. And obviously it took him forever. In all seriousness, Dark Viper AU, that's amazing. 
At number six, a gamer went the extra mile in terms of catching all the Pokemon. They didn't just catch all of the Pokemon, they caught all of the shiny Pokemon. So even catching one shiny Pokemon is a rare thing. You don't just get a ton of that happening. So when a trainer by the name of Cuden shared their shiny collection on the Pokemon Home app, people were like, are you kidding me? This guy had 1,312 shiny Pokemon. It would probably take millions of Pokemon encounters to get all of the shiny Pokemon across all of the games. But that's exactly what he did. A lot of people weren't even sure that this was something that was like physically possible. So to see somebody who's actually done it is insane. Like this person has played so much Pokemon that it's actually hard to believe. At number five, a guy actually beat Fallout 4 without killing anyone, which is, I mean, let's just go ahead and talk about what Fallout 4 actually is. It is a game that absolutely 100% demands that you commit murder. And that's not like a thing saying, oh, it's just really hard. It's it's the how they designed the game. That is how Bethesda set forward and was like, okay, this is a action RPG shooter. Older Fallout games did allow you to play without killing, for the most part at least, but Todd Howard explicitly said, I don't know if you can play the whole game without violence. So we've talked about this kind of playthrough before. A player by the name of Kyle Hickney basically tricks the game into doing all the violence for him. That way he gets zero kills. He doesn't kill any robots, doesn't kill any people, doesn't kill anything. And he documented all of it. And in order to get XP, he has to just constantly build stuff in settlements to get necessary skills in order to progress in the game. It's all honestly really clever, and he did it on survival. At number four, we are talking the exact opposite. A guy who spent several months killing absolutely everyone in Fallout 3. Now, in Fallout 3, you do have an easier time doing a no violence run, but a guy by the name of many a true nerd was like, you know what? I'm killing absolutely everybody in the entire game. Now, thing is, there are a lot of characters in Fallout 3 which you can't kill. I mean, if you want the story to progress anyways. The way that many a true nerd put it, he said, I wanted to see how far the plot could stretch. How would the game respond to me intentionally trying to break the plot by constantly attacking people it really wants me to be friends with? There's also some interesting things in the game that many a true nerd manages to reveal, like the fact that when one of the characters wants to pay respects to another character, if you chop up the body, the part that matters to that character is in fact the torso. Yeah, and there's just tons of stuff like this during the course of the playthrough. By the end of the playthrough, he actually killed 3,012 people, and everybody who it does not allow you to kill, he knocked unconscious at least once. At number three, a gamer running a channel by the name of Slackinator did the first 100% genuine damageless playthrough of Ninja Gaiden. Now, there are a lot of quote-unquote damageless playthroughs that do take a hit from a demon boss, which drops its head at you and it's impossible to avoid. Now, Slackinator figured out how to do this while killing the head. And what you need to do that is an incredibly complex maneuver in which you negate the animation, which takes a while to slash, so that you can slash more times in the air than you can by default, and then hold the controller a very specific way as to be able to button mash and hit the slash button many times in a second. Now, without negating the animation or doing that maneuver, you're able to slash two times in the air because the animation takes so long to get through. Negating that animation and doing the maneuver allows you to slash about six times in the air, and after many, many tries, Slackinator was able to destroy this head as it was dropping on onto the ground so that he did not have to deal with the unavoidable tumbling of the head and could just completely proceed, making it the 100% first genuine damageless playthrough uploaded to YouTube. And frankly, he talks about the odds and you not only have to get through the entire game without getting hit, you also have to not get hit by a stray shrimp which is being thrown by the demon, but you also have to pull off the maneuver which he said took him at least 20 tries. 20 tries while doing all of that other stuff. Like there's elements of luck involved and elements of skill and Slackinator pulled off all of it. 
At number two, an old school RuneScape player by the name of Lynx Titan was the first player to reach 200 million XP in all 23 skills on December 28, 2018, which, by the way, ranked him permanently at number one on all the old school RuneScape high scores unless a new skill becomes released, which would allow him to, you know, keep trying to do that. There are estimates that this guy plays between 17 and 18 hours a day, and a lot of people consider this guy to be the most efficient if not the best runescape player of all time he also plays runescape 3 on an account called forsberg 888 and he has a ton of really impressive achievements there but it's really an old school runescape that Lynx titan totally rules and finally at number one yep it's another many a true nerd accomplishment so fallout 3 is a really hard game and although, yes, this guy knows what he's talking about when it comes to Fallout games, what he decided to do was really an intense undertaking. Many a true nerd decided he was going to beat Fallout 3 without healing a single time. Now, that didn't just mean not healing, it meant not having radiation treatments, and it especially meant never having companions. It's just really interesting watching this. Obviously, he planned it very intricately, because, I mean, you start off being very tolerant of, like, some characters that are not the best to avoid taking even small amounts of damage in the beginning of the game. There's also knowing when power armor is actually useful compared to combat armor. Just making lots of small choices like that that just make this a really interesting playthrough. I haven't watched the whole thing, but I have watched a pretty fair amount of it. And if there's one thing many a true gamer knows, it's Fallout. That's all for today. Let us know what you think. Leave us a comment. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.